Before we get started, this is 17 U.S.C. 107, commonly referred to as the Fair Use Provision. It allows for people like me to use someone else's material under certain circumstances without infringing upon their copyright. I've highlighted it for you. 107 contains a list of the various purposes for which the reproduction of a particular work may be considered fair, such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. To state my intentions clearly, this video uses clips from another work and a critique commentary about that selfsame work. The video you are watching is clearly protected by the Fair Use Doctrine, and filing a copyright strike against it is illegal, dishonest, and overall bad-tempered. This is a video by 333DBD2, a video called Proof Atheists Don't Exist. The title made me pinch myself. Perhaps I was dreaming. No dream, I'm afraid. But not only did I manage to pinch an atheist, I managed to get pinched by an atheist at the same time. Something seems fishy. I'll let 333 speak for himself. Uh, atheists don't believe that there is a god, and um, I just want to give you a demonstration to see whether or not atheism, uh, the belief in atheism, is actually credible. Um, whenever you're talking to an atheist, you ask them if you can um, have them participate in a, in a little demonstration. Of course, they're going to agree to it. And what you'll do is you'll take a piece of paper like this, and then you're going to draw a circle. And you're going to say, okay, Mr. Atheist, can we agree, for the purposes of this illustration, can we just agree that all the knowledge that exists in the universe exists inside this circle? Is that okay? And the atheist is going to say, yes, that's okay. And what you'll do is you'll hand them a pen, and you'll ask them to mark how much of this knowledge they currently possess. And they're going to put a little dot here, okay? So you're going to say, Mr. Atheist, I just want to make sure I get this correct. If all the knowledge that exists in the universe exists inside this circle, and the current knowledge that you do currently possess exists inside this little dot, is it possible that in the knowledge that you do not yet possess, God exists someplace in there? First things first, the attitude of this video is appalling. This man is literally telling other Christians what to say and do when they meet an atheist, as if he thinks they are not smart enough to defend the faith without this not-so-clever word game. It's an attitude I find abhorrent, because in Christian circles, you find that one person tells everyone else what to say and think. It's terrible, because then atheists like me have to continually debunk the same silly word game over and over, and none of the people presenting the word game actually thought it through. They've just regurgitated it, much like this guy has, and they care very little about it. They're just doing what they're told to do. This apologetic is very old, after all. You didn't come up with it. I heard it back when I was a Christian, and I thought it was dishonest then. Buckling down to the point at hand, we've got a circle representing knowledge. We've got a dot representing what I know. So if I'm with you, Mr. Christian, your example is kind of like saying all numbers are inside of this circle, even though there's an infinite set. Knowledge continually grows, so um, I'll just play along with what your metaphor is. But now you want to know if it's possible that somewhere in the white space, God does exist. Here's where your word game falls apart. 1. Allow me to complete your metaphor for you. You aren't talking about the universe, reality, or something physical. You are talking about knowledge. If you think that God exists in knowledge, that means you think that God only exists in the mind. That makes him imaginary. 2. Which God are you talking about here? You see, Mr. Christian, you've just opened up Pandora's box. Your knowledge is a similar little dot. How can you say that Allah, Kitsakawatl, Shiva, Thor, Osiris, or any of the other thousands of gods don't exist? How can you say that the Bible isn't a trick from the devil leading you away from the true faith? If you're going to say that ignorance about the universe is an acceptable reason to believe in a supernatural ghost figure that uses the form of speaking magic to create the world, a magic dustman, a rib woman, and a talking snake, then you've jumped ship on reality, logic, and reasoning, and there is no more valid reason to be talking with you. You'll want to look up the term argument from ignorance. It's a logical fallacy that you'll want to avoid in the future. 3. I don't need to know everything in the white to know that your specific Christian god does not exist. <clears throat> your God makes very specific claims in his holy book. Some of those claims have been proven false. That makes those claims lies. And your holy book clearly states that God cannot lie. I don't need to know everything in white to know that your God does not exist. Now those other gods, that's a different story. The word game was fun. It's a good, hey you atheist, back off saying my God don't exist. You don't know everything. Easily refuted. But then... Mr. Christian, you made absurd claim after absurd claim. 
since we know in some gigantic cosmic circle all the knowledge in the universe does exist, and we know that no human could ever possess that knowledge, the only thing that we know is that in some giant cosmic circle all the knowledge in the universe does exist and it was put there by somebody or something. Well, the somebody or something that put it there has to be greater than that knowledge or they could never have put it there. The only logical conclusion would be that God put it there, otherwise it could not exist. And as long as an atheist will never have absolute knowledge of all of the things, all the knowledge that exists inside that, in, that uh, circle, they can never make an honest claim, or an, I, I, I should say an honest claim they can make, because sometimes they don't know, but they can never make a bold claim saying that God does not exist unless they possess absolute knowledge or all the knowledge that does exist inside that circle. Okay, a lot of bad was just put out there, so I'm going to take this down one chunk at a time. It, knowledge, was put there by someone or something. So a hypothetical person placed an abstract noun inside of your hypothetical and abstract circle. I really don't know where to begin. Can you provide any evidence that any of those things exist? That anything remotely close to this must be how knowledge came about? Or that any of these are valid metaphors that reflect the way that reality functions. I don't think so. I think you just conjured up a sophomoric ideal that is extremely vague and yet also strangely very specific to try to prove to atheists that they aren't as smart as they think they are. Here's my alternative, which does not rely on word games, vague abstract hypotheticals, or a ghost spirit. Reality exists. Reality behaves in certain ways. As evolved creatures with a higher capacity for thought than anything else we know, humans have developed language to understand certain things about the universe. Other animals have done so also, but their language isn't as sophisticated as ours as far as we know. Through language we've come to understand how reality works, and therefore have amassed a body of knowledge. You see, in my example, it is human beings that create knowledge, whereas you have some hypothetical spirit ghost creating it, forging it really, and storing it in some magical circle and through some mention you failed to elaborate on, it shares it with mankind. But just really enough to put a black dot in the middle of a white page, your spirit is really stingy with its knowledge. I'm not surprised to see this disconnect between our two ideologies. You seem to think it was God that created men, where I think quite the opposite. Your next claim. The somebody or something that put it, knowledge, there, the magic circle, has to be greater than that knowledge. This trick is not new to Christianity or religion in general. The trick, which I'll dub smoke and mirrors, is to speak in such a vague, abstract, and generalized way that you can trick your audience into thinking that you are actually talking about something. You also get to sound smart while you talk about your whatever it is. That's all this video really is. I'll translate what you said from Christianese to English for the rest of my audience. The somebody implied to be the Christian god, although he's opened the door to let in Osiris, Odin, the thousands of other gods, spirits, demons, fairies, or whatever, has to be greater than an abstract noun in some unspecified way. He really didn't say anything there, did he? So let's recap. Your title lied about my existence. Your description lies twice when you say that you are using logic and reason. Let's throw a third lie in there, you really didn't prove anything. This video is instructions for a poorly thought out word game you expect other Christians to carry out. You've proved that if God does exist, that he's imaginary. Well done on that, I didn't think it was possible. You've used this apologetic to justify the existence of every single God out there. Some might consider that blasphemy, proving that other gods exist. You managed to be extremely specific and vague about how a hypothetical man placed an abstract noun inside of a hypothetic and abstract circle, and you've completely misrepresented what knowledge is.